Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts with Teresa, our guest viewer. She is sharing her testimony, and now she's going to move into the area. You know, we stopped at the last video. She's going to move into talking about what happened when she received a Christmas present as a child. And I want you people to hear this because some toys are not worth playing with. Teresa, thank you so much. Hello, Pat. God bless. God bless you, girl. Thank you. Wow. And God bless the viewers that are listening. I thank you for listening to my testimony. Amen. I thank you for sharing it. Oh, I'm so glad to share it. I promise God when he saved me that if anybody would listen, I they would tell. Right. Well, to get back to my story, um, as a child, my sister and I received a Ouija board for Christmas present, not really knowing. I mean, uh, from what I you could get from the commercials or whatever, but I didn't know that it was as dark. Um, that, that it wasn't a game. <laughs> you I hear that, everybody? Dark. She got a Ouija board for Christmas. She had no idea, like most of us, right? She had no idea how dark that game really was. Hello. Go on, babe. Exactly. And like I was saying, my father was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. um, he, would take off, uh, he would take off and he would be gone a week, a few days, two weeks. Well, this particular time, been gone for a couple weeks. Mom didn't have no idea where he was at. He didn't have no idea where he was at. He what? So I'm sorry. Can you repeat and that? And uh, we set the board down on the floor, and we started asking it questions. And we asked it, um, "Where, where is our dad at?" Okay, so and now you're on the Ouija board. That's what we missed. You're on the Ouija board sitting on the floor yes. as a family consulting with it to find out where your father is because he's been gone for two weeks. Wow. Okay, continue. Yeah. And um, so it spelled out jail. Oh! And yeah, uh, he was in jail. And so after we got through playing with it, we went in. I told we told mom what the Ouija board said that he, that he was in jail. Well, lo and behold, when he did come home, exactly where he was at. Wow. Exactly. So, see how subtle yes. Satan works. Yes, it lures you in. Yes, he he lures you in. Well, we played with it over the years, but that's the only thing out of my childhood with it that really stuck out because I can remember it, it telling me exactly what I had asked it. And that's what the, the game said that it would do. Ask it a question, and it'll tell you the truth. It'll tell you your future, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, to, to speed up, um, back when I was in my... Um, I think it was in, must have been in my 30s, late 20s, 30s. Um, in Columbus, Ohio, they had what they call a psychic fair. Oh. Mm-hmm. And my sister actually introduced me to that. Mm -hmm. She wasn't, wasn't a witch, but she believed in, um, like, um, I don't know, in, not intuition, but like, she wasn't in the witchcraft, but she was just interested in that sort of thing. Right. right? It, she was intrigued by it. Yes. Yeah, she was very intrigued. Mm -hmm. Well, she went one year, and then she didn't tell me about it. And um, so the next year, she, she mentioned it, and I said, oh, let me go. Let me go. I want to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, at the time, you know, I mean... I, I've had that kind of interest all my life. Oh, yeah. I probably uh, would have been fascinated with it, too, back then. I know. Yeah. So we went to it's the psychic fair. We paid a fee to, to, pay a fee to go see the psychic. And the psychic said, well, I see a, um, a boy uh, that's in your family. If you're not careful... 
he's going to fall through the crack. Mm. Well, I knew exactly who she was talking about. And it was my nephew. Well, she tried to tell me, no, I don't know well, it's your nephew. I think it may be your grandson. Okay, or hold on. Nephew. Hold on. Let me repeat on that because I want you guys to hear this. She said that the psychic told her that there was a boy. And if he's not careful, he's going to fall through a crack. Is that correct? That's correct. That if we weren't, if we weren't careful as uh, parents and that he would fall through the cracks. Wow. Well, um, I knew exactly who she was talking about. And so after that, um, it wasn't probably about a year or so later, I had a nephew that did exactly that. Oh, my goodness. So, um, it, it, it was kind of a personal, and, and I don't really want to say it. Oh, you don't have care. to. Don't worry about it. But uh, he, he didn't fall through the crack. He hit bottom. He hit rock bottom. Right. I put it that way. So it was. So it was a. Fig, it was an expression. He's gonna fall through the cracks. Wow. Exactly. Exactly. And so um, there's nothing I can say to. It's just you just got to word that this is exactly what happened. How subtle Satan is. He right. draws you in. He gives you he gives bits and pieces over you know, over your life to draw you in. Right. Uh, uh, let me repeat what you're saying, Teresa. This is what Satan does. It's his tactic. He gives you bits and pieces. They titillate you. They 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 entice you and they draw you in like a good fisherman. He knows when to pull you in and let the reel relax a little bit and let you have your way. And then he reels you in a little more. And then he lets it out and relaxes. And then he reels you in a little more till he wears you down. And then you succumb to every little mess he wants to work in your life until he sucks the life out of you. But I'm telling you, exactly. it's not something to play with. And a lot of you want no. to play. He's not playing, no. you guys. Okay, go no, on. No, he's not. He's not playing to lift you up in any way. No. He's playing to drag you down. Yes. He's going to, I mean, don't know it at the time, but he's got a hold of your soul. Yes. And he's pulling you. But you're thinking, well, you know, I've got the truth on this. And I've got the truth on that. You know, this can't be as bad as what you think. But let me tell you, when I hit rock bottom, when I lost my, uh, when I lost my income, when I lost my insurance, when I almost lost my home, when I almost lost my mind and my insurance, I was at rock bottom. Right. I was at rock bottom. Well, I wanted to tell them, Stuart, I didn't have time the last time. After I became a Christian and I got rid of everything, I mean, everything that I could possibly remember where I stashed this or stashed that, it was gone. Right. So being a baby Christian, I mean, I knew about God. I mean, I wasn't ignorant about things, but I wasn't Bible versed. I didn't read the Bible, but I found Christians. On my TV, I've got direct TV, and they've got several Christian channels. Right. So I would first throw them to where there's something that would perk my spirit up or get my attention or something of that nature. Well, I come across this, um, I think it was kind of like a special conference of some sort. A conference? And so he started, uh, I think was saying, we're going to pray. Now you pray along with this, or you pray yourself. But um, I can't imagine, I can't really remember exactly what he was talking about prayer. But I knew that I, I I wanted to pray, so I got down on my knees in front of the TV and I placed my hands on this TV, and I was praying as hard as I could possibly pray. I was saying, Lord, Lord, Lord. I said, I just come out of this witchcraft. I know there's demons. I said, please, Lord Jesus, send your angels with their swords drawn to encamp around me until I can get strong enough 
to rebuke Satan or the demons because I didn't know what the devil's tactics would be because he just lost a soul. Mm. And and I was I was worried because I didn't know what would come about, what he might try. Mm -hmm. So I would just pray, pray, pray. You know, I was just right. praying as hard as I could. And so while I was praying, asking him to send his angels with their sworn drawn to protect me, I heard the loudest crash. Mm. It hurt me so much. I was dumped out of my I, she I heard this there, loud like, crack, and it scared her so crack. much, she almost jumped out of her skin. Yes, ma'am. Someone dropped a, a wooden broom handle from about five to ten feet above and hitting on a wood or a tile floor. I mean, it was just like a crack. Wow. And, yeah, and I mean, it got my attention. <laughs> I and guess so. so. I, <laughs> then I got angry. I said, you're not interrupting my prayer life whatsoever. Right. So I went uh, around the room because I was in my bedroom and my bed was carpeted. And I didn't see anything that fell, anything that got knocked over. This was at 11 o'clock at night when I was doing this praying. Um, my boyfriend at the time, he was in another room sleeping, and the only other living thing in my house was my, my dog, and he was asleep. And I live in the country, and at 11 o'clock at night, no one's out mowing their lawn. There's nobody out there target practicing or shooting off a BB or doing anything, because I live pretty much, you know, far away from other homes. But, you know, if a lawnmower would pick up a rock, you know, it, it, it could possibly hit my house. But right. like I said, it was 11 o'clock at night. And I knew that there had been nothing that could have hit my house or anything. So I, I couldn't figure out what it was. So I went back to my prayers and I prayed and I prayed and I ended my prayers. And the next day I was I, it was daylight. I was sitting at the edge of my bed, going through my Christian channels, trying to find something that took my, you know, put my spirit up. And I looked up, and right above where my TV is, I got a TV console. I got a flat screen TV. But I looked up above, and the day and the sunlight was shining through my windows to such that I noticed my window was cracked. Oh my goodness! I, I said. It wasn't like that. The day. And I said, because I would open it up. It was spring or summertime, and I would open it up, you know, to get air or whatever. And I knew my window had cracked, but I was sitting there, and I kept thinking, is that a cobweb, or is my window cracked, or what is that on my window? I got up, and I looked, and it was cracked, girlfriend. Wow. I, a double pane. I have a double pane window. And my screen was where my window was cracked, that, that section of my window, the screen was down. And I got to looking, and I said, well, there's no possible way, of, you know, anybody mowing the rock could have hit it. There was no holes in my screen. Right. Like, like something like a rock or something could have went through it and cracked my window. And I thought, well, no one would have been mowing at 11 o'clock at night anyway, you know. And then I got to thinking. Um, back in, in my witchcraft days, I would do cleansing because, uh, you know, maybe a lot of people don't know this, but uh, maybe you've seen these ghost shows or haunting shows. People go in there and they use a sage stick and they smudge and they burn candles or incense right. to get rid of what they think is evil. Right. So when you, when they would do that, they would tell you to open up your windows or doors so that the spirit's out. Mm. So I got to thinking that what had happened was my prayers or the angels came and whatever residue might have been in my hall for being in a witchcraft or there could have been demons in there. I don't know. I've never personally seen a demon or any anything like that. I just know that they are real. Mm, uh, I know it was definitely. real then, and those are real now. So the only thing that really? I can possibly think is that when I prayed, 
And when those angels came in and camped around me, they chased this thing out of my house. Right. Out of my bed. Because my bedroom is is where I did all my spell work, my circle work, my rituals, all that stuff. So if they had even been anywhere, they would have been in my bedroom. Right. So I'm telling you, people, the demons are real. Um, Pat can probably tell you more stories than I can. She, she's seen them. She's, you know, but I've never seen them. They've never attacked me in any way. But anytime you work with witchcraft or anything dark or, or into, uh, porn or um, sexual sin or into drugs, you, you draw those things in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether you know it or not, you draw them in. But exactly. It, being said, I, you know, I, I, I knew about them my whole life, really. And uh, because I was into the um, horror shows and movies and that sort of thing. So it wasn't that I, w I was ignorant of the fact of them. But uh, I didn't, I thought when I got saved that, you know, um, nothing would be in my house. That, you know, I my, my spirit, my body, my soul, my mind, my heart was with Jesus. But even though they might tremble for the, from the word Jesus, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gone. That's right. Plants, Say that again. Say that again, Teresa. Repeat that I said, statement. I said, even though, you know, your heart and your spirit, your mind and, and your soul, you know that you know that you know that you know that you're saved, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the demons are gone. Thank you. It doesn't necessarily mean that even though you've given your heart to the Lord, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're trying to do everything you can to live a holy life. Like she said, her boyfriend slept in a whole nother room. She got rid of all the accursed things. But even though you're saved, it doesn't mean that all the demons are gone yet. Exactly. Exactly. And knowing that... Knowing what I knew and knowing what you had to do, even as a witch, that you had to make an exit for these things to leave. Mm -hmm. Or they could do exactly what they did to me. They they cracked my window. And this wasn't on the this was on the outside. I got two panes. This was not on the inside towards my bedroom. It was on the outside um, window with a screen over it and no holes in my screen at all. Wow. None. Look at that. No <laughs> hole, no dent, no, no, no indication of anything flying through the air, hitting it. Look at that. Right. Exactly. So I knew in my heart, I knew my spirit. I don't know if there's something got put into me, but I knew that I knew that I knew praying and asking for, the angels to encamp around me. Yes. To chase these things away from me. That's where it went. It had to, it had to leave in name. Yes. Yes. You know, what Teresa said is such a key. There's a, a, a person I heard on, um, on online, a speaker, who said, I wish I could remember their name, but they said that some of you have got angels that are unemployed. And the reason they're exactly. unemployed is because you never think to ask God to ask to make them do certain things for you. When I go to bed exactly. at night, okay, and, and I know doing this ministry and, and doing some things at another church at times, I know that there are times when I come under a heavy demonic attack. But what I try to do is if I don't fall asleep before my head hits the bed too soon, I try to remember every night. Sometimes I fall asleep before the words get out of my mouth. God will cover me. But there are other times I have to deal with the battle, but I still know how to deal with that as well. But there are times I always ask God, Lord, please surround my bed, fill my bedroom, cover my bed under my bed with angels to protect me while I'm sleeping in the name exactly. of Jesus. Because when you don't put angels to work and they're not being dispatched by the Lord on your request, 
guess what? They don't have to do everything because there's, there's a scripture in the Bible that says you have not because you ask not. Now, exactly. now we're going to stop here and we're going to continue, but we're going to continue on the next video. We'll be back. Stay tuned.